Welcome back friends to the CTO vlog and as you can see today I'm sitting outside. This is a beautiful clear morning in mid-April and I'm sitting amid a patch of violets. You probably can't see them very well but I picked a few for you here and I want to talk today about creativity in our classes and to tell a little story about violets and, and connect it to something that maybe we can use in our own classroom. Uh, every time I walk by a little patch of wildflowers like this, the violets, I think about something that I read years ago on a calendar. This was back in 2005 and it's by Tennessee Williams and it says, the violets in the mountains have broken the rocks. And I love that idea that we have something very fragile and ephemeral and beautiful like violets, but they can break through the resistance, even of the rocks. And especially, you know, those of us who teach English, we are really bad about it. We like personification and, and narrative structure. And so we want to think about this as those heroic violets. They are the one, violets, not violets. They are the ones that are uh, working against the odds, but they do what they can and they break through and it's beauty and creativity that, that wins the day. But if we think about it, there's another story going on right now about something very small but powerful. We may have seen some of the beautiful images of the coronavirus and we know that it's also very small but it's also very persistent and it's also broken down some walls, the walls of our classrooms. But we're not so happy about that. We don't see that as a heroic narrative. And yet we can cast ourselves in that as the heroes in this narrative because we can say, even in this, we can prevail. We're not going to be daunted and we're not going to be stopped by it. So how can we use creativity in our classrooms, in our pedagogy to make things better right now, to make our lives healthier and happier and the lives of our students in these last few weeks that we have of this semester and possibly going into the next semester also. Uh, so I want to talk for just a minute about what society is doing because this is a time where, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention because a few weeks ago when we were told there are no masks, People started learning how to make masks just out of paper towels and things like that. And now there are creative teams at some of the best universities that are redesigning the N95 mask and respirator so that it can work more efficiently. Because we're realizing now it has our attention and we think we've got to do this. We've got to be ready next time. So society is using creative design creative methods right now to try to overcome some of the problems whether it's those people at home making the homemade masks sewing them on sewing machines putting them over their ears with rubber bands whatever it is they're finding ways and of course you know when we think about creativity a lot of times we think oh well that must be painting or drawing or something like that and certainly it can be those things and those are very good if you can include those but it can also just be a way of thinking creatively about course design. So as we're thinking about our courses right now that we maybe had to redesign so urgently, maybe in these last few weeks we can think, is there a place where I could add a little creativity? And by adding, we're certainly not meeting, meaning to add any assignments, but is there some place even you could just put a little place that students could submit some uh, humor for a cartoon that they find course obviously you're going to want to vet those first or, or uh, to curate that certainly but it's a time that people could share inspirational thoughts that they could share funny thoughts you can just do something creative that sort of lightens the mood we have one colleague in our department who's using humor he's putting on a wig he's using mr. potato head in his lectures things like that and he's showing that even in serious things, you can lighten the mood sometimes. Certainly that's what Shakespeare did. He didn't write those stories without having some comic relief. And usually by the time the jester comes on, we're ready for some lightening up. So think about ways that we can do this. I want to share this little story that yesterday in my classroom, 
my virtual classroom, uh, it was a flipped classroom, flipped in that I was the student and one of the students was teaching. She it was an English methods class and she was teaching uh, the rest of us and so I put myself in the student role and then to my dismay she wanted us to draw something from one of the readings that we had. She said draw a scene from the chapter that we had in one of the books that we were reading and immediately my heart skipped a beat and I thought I can't draw. I don't want to draw. I don't want anybody to see my drawing and then I said just get over yourself and do this and just have fun with it. And so I made my stick figures and one of them was crying, he was in jail, his teacher had come to help him. And so then I was the first to share mine, not because it was best, but because, you know, I just wanted to get it over with, I guess. But once I did and I overcame that fear of sharing something that I didn't feel so prepared, I felt a little more fearless after that. So I think it can be good even for those resistant people who say, I'm not very good at this. I can't draw. I can't paint. I can't write a poem. I can't. There are other things that you can do to show creativity, but sometimes just pushing the students a little bit, as I was pushed yesterday, can be a good thing. And certainly, uh, I'm glad now that I did it. So right now, what can we do? You may say, there's just a couple of weeks left. I've already got my everything set. I would suggest possibly looking at your schedule and see, is there any uh, assignment that you've put in there that you think well this one's not really so good maybe I could give an alternate optional creative assignment on this and one of the reasons I'm suggesting this is because we've seen a lot of students lately who are saying I am just so stressed out I can't get motivation they're seeing so much of the so many of the assignments being the same kind of thing you know just post on a discussion board and threaded replies and those can be good those can even be creative but sometimes maybe just to have something that's a little different could help them to get motivated and so if you add something and I'm going to uh, uh, give a list of a few resources some things that might help you get some ideas I'll attach that to the email that I'm putting this video in and so to give you a few ideas of something that you might be able to do right now or, or at least ways to think about right now uh, uh, having an option that you might change and then as we look to the future we're already being told that for fall things may be better and then they may get worse again because in the 1918 pandemic there were three waves so we have to be prepared for whatever is coming and I know that's not what you want to hear it's not what I want to say but we have to be prepared so that next time we can create more creatively instead of more urgently when we're designing our courses and so I want us to be preparing now to find some resources to ways to think about this ways maybe of sharing with each other please email me if you've got some good creative ideas some things that have worked um, in February, I had a CTL event and it was on assessing creativity. And uh, that was back in the days when humans used to be able to get together and eat. We had red beans and rice and it was really great. Uh, Terry Engel from the English department and Lori Walker from math and Sarah Wilhoyt from the art department got together and talked about ways that in their different disciplines they use creativity but especially I wanted to emphasize in the CTL, how do you assess this? And there can be some times that you might have something creative that doesn't need to be assessed, but if you do want to add an assignment that you're assessing as part of your outcomes, then there are ways of doing that. And I'm attaching also to this email a PowerPoint that Sarah Wilhoyt created, and uh, with her permission, I'm sharing this with you, and it might be able to help you just a little bit. So as I close and we think about the ways that we're trying to take care of ourselves with our mental and physical health, I want to submit to you that being more creative might be one of the best therapies right now. Certainly it's not going to prevent us from getting a virus, but it can prevent us from the monotony that comes as a side effect of the virus. So please think about ways that you can be more creative in your life, in your classroom, in your relationships with others because the world is doing that right now. It's a time for reinvention. So if the violets can break the rocks 
and viruses can break through walls, then surely we in higher education can break through some, with some new ways of thinking and teaching and designing our courses. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.